makes friends with the as the Everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my August wrap-up for 2023 part 2. I read a total of 14 books this month so if you would like to see the first seven books that'll be linked below and you can check them out. But without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I'm going to talk about is The Five Stages of Andrew Brawley by Sean David Hutchinson. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Andrew Brawley who should have died the night that his parents and and sister perished in a car crash. He now spends his days wandering the hospital and blaming himself for their loss. Andrew makes friends with the other residents at the hospital, including Lexi and Trevor, and then one day a boy named Rusty is wheeled into the emergency ward with burns covering his body. Andrew begins spending time with Rusty and they develop a strong connection, and it's the story of that. I liked this, but I didn't love it as much as I liked We Are the Ants by the same author. I thought it was an interesting exploration of love and grief, but my biggest qualm for this book is the insta-love. I just am not a fan of it, and it was just so insta-love. I just couldn't get behind the romance, and that's basically what the entire book is about. I just wish that it was more of a focus on the friendships between Andrew and everybody in the hospital rather than the romance between him and Rusty. I honestly think I would have liked this better if Rusty and Andrew were just platonic with each other. I did like the ending though and I think that it was very sweet. I do think that it was a little bit rushed though. So many people talk about how this is such an emotional, heartbreaking book, which I agree, but I don't think the emotion really hit me until the last little bit of the book, which was a tad bit disappointing because I was like, maybe this is the book that's gonna make me cry this year. It didn't. 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next book I have is Ghost Book by Remy Lay. This is a graphic novel that I gave 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Julie Chen, who is able to see ghosts, but she tries her hardest to pretend that she cannot. Her father has always told her that ghosts don't exist, but during Hungry Ghost Month, they are very hard to ignore. Then she meets a young ghost named William, who isn't quite yet a ghost. So she teams up with William to try to get his soul back into his body before he is eaten by a hungry ghost, but they run into a couple of obstacles along the way. So like I said, this is a graphic novel. It is middle grade and it is based off of Chinese mythology. It's a very sweet story, very focused on friendship, which I really liked. It's also very, very colorful, which I really enjoyed because, you know, your girl loves her colors and the panels were very easy to follow. I really liked all the different ghosts that were depicted. I just thought they were really fun. Oxhead and Horseface are two of the characters in this and I don't really want to give their role away, but I thought that they were two of the funniest characters. Like, they had me giggling throughout the entire book. I'll show you a picture of them. That's them, but don't read what it says because it might be spoilers. There's also an adorable little dog ghost named Floof, and if that doesn't make you want to read this, I don't know what will because it is just a really, really, really cute graphic novel, so I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I think middle graders will really love this. Next up, I have Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller, which I gave 4 out of 5 stars. This follows Alosa, who is the daughter of the Pirate King. She has just been kidnapped by an enemy ship. Little do they know, she actually planned to be kidnapped, and she is hoping to find a map that will lead her father to an ancient treasure trove. In order to seem weak, she must hide her true abilities from the crew, and it's kind of the story of her trying to find this map, while also getting into a little bit of shenanigans along the way. Trisha Levenseller is probably one of my favorite authors. I just think that her writing is so compelling. I can officially say that I love a good sword fight. I think pirates may be one of my new favorite tropes. And if you give me a badass female pirate, I'm gonna eat that shit up. I am obsessed with Alosa. I think she may be one of my new favorite characters. She is just so witty, smart, and fierce. I loved how headstrong and stubborn she was. Also, big fan of the enemies to lovers trope and give me two characters that are both sassy and you know the banter is gonna hit. Raiden was a very intriguing character. I really like how loyal he was and I really loved watching their relationship grow throughout the story. I thought the pacing was really well done. I was never bored while reading. I was fully engaged the entire time and I am so intrigued to see where the heck this story is going so I really do need to find a copy of the second book. I'm really hoping we get more of Alosa's all-female crew 
but I guess we'll see. But like I said, I need that second book. Next up, I have The Stormcrow by Kaylin Josephine, and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars as well. This takes place in the kingdom of Rodare, who utilize elemental crows to protect their people. One day, the Aleutians, a rival kingdom, attack and murder all of the crows. Princess Thea was on track to become a storm rider, but after the attack, she falls into a great depression. After the death of their mother, her older sister, Kaliza, is trying to rule the kingdom to the best of her ability. Kaliza then betrothes Fia to the crown prince of Eleusian named Erickson against her will. So when Fia discovers an unhatched crow egg, she will stop at nothing to hatch it in order to restore power to her people. I really enjoyed this. I do think it was a lot of fun. It was a little bit predictable at times and it was definitely a slow burn read, but I do think that the outcome was worth it in the end. I think that the book started off with a bang and then just slowly dissipated as it went on. I did like the concept of the elemental crows. I think that they were really cool, but I wish that we had known more about them. I was a tad disappointed that the crows play a really small role in this book. I'm hoping that in the second book they play a bigger part. I thought that the depression representation in this with Anthea was really well done, and I really like how it was an own voices novel. I loved the relationship between Thea and her guard, Kiva. You could really tell that they both cared for each other equally, and they were just so protective of one another. I think Erickson was probably my favorite character. He is such a sassy prince, and we love a good sassy prince. I think that the banter between Erickson and Thea was really funny, and I loved watching their relationship grow as the story progressed. There is also a bit of a love triangle, which I can't say I cared that much about. I guess it added a layer to the story, but I could have done without it. I think that the relationship between those two people could have remained platonic and it would have been more effective, but that's just my opinion. I am definitely intrigued to see where the story goes, so I do actually own the second book, which is rare for me, but I will be picking it up soon, hopefully, and I'll let you guys know what I think when I'm done. Next up, I have Retribution Rails by Aaron Bowen. I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It is the companion novel to Vengeance Road, which I read last month, and I did like this one a little bit more. This takes place 10 years after the events of Vengeance Road. It follows Reese Murphy, who is forced to join the Rose Rider gang against his will. After a train robbery gone wrong, he gets tangled up with Charlotte Vaughn, who is an aspiring journalist who may just be the answer to his freedom. Like I said, I like this more than I did Vengeance Road. I think that it had a much quicker pace. This one kept me intrigued the whole time where Vengeance Road kind of dragged for me. This is told in alternating points of views between Reese and Charlotte. I personally liked Reese better. I really liked his redemption arc and it honestly broke my heart that he didn't think that he was good enough for certain things, like my sweet angel. Charlotte annoyed me at times. I think she was a good character, but she got on my nerves with her whole insistence that there's only good and evil, there's nothing in between. Like, girl, where are you living? People are morally gray. It's just the way the world works. And it just bugged me that she could not see that. She definitely did grow on me as the story progressed and it got a little bit better, but can't say she's still my favorite character. I also really loved how this wasn't solely focused on the romance. It definitely took a big backseat to the rest of the plot. I also really love how we got to see Kate and Jesse again. I like how they played a big role in this book and I loved seeing them learn to trust people outside of their little bubble. Overall, I enjoyed this. I don't think that you need to read Vengeance Road to pick this up, but I personally would just so that you kind of get the background of who Kate and Jesse are to fully understand. But it was fun, 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up, I have Only Ashes Remain by Rebecca Schaefer. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. It is the second book in the market of monsters. The first book is Not Even Bones, which I read back in like 2018, and I finally picked this one up. It essentially picks up right where Not Even Bones leaves off. I will say that I liked the first book a lot better than I did this one. I'm all for a revenge plot, and that's pretty much all this book was. <laughs> I really liked following Nita and Kovit and watching them wreak havoc on the world. It was very similar to the first book where it became very repetitive very quickly. I do still really like Nita and Kovit as main characters. They are so morally gray. They refuse to take shit from anybody, and I really 
really loved that. I also really liked that we got more of a backstory on Covet this time. There's also the addition of new secondary characters with Adair who is a Kelpie and that means that he basically takes his victims and drowns them before ripping them apart and eating them. He gives favors in return for knowledge that keeps him off of the hunted list and I really want him to play a bigger role in the third and final book because I found him to be so interesting. I also just found it insane how many people died in this book. Not that I'm complaining because your girl loves death and gore, but like it is a ridiculous amount of people. I actually just found a copy of the third book at a sale, so I'm very excited that I will be able to pick that up soon, hopefully very soon. And then the final book that I have to talk about for my August 2023 wrap-up is The Counselors by Jessica Goodman. I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This takes place at Camp Alpine Lake, which is Goldie's home away from home. The camp comes with a very hefty price tag to attend, and the only reason Goldie was able to go was because her parents actually worked at the camp. After a nightmare year at home, Goldie is harboring a deep, dark secret. Goldie returns to the camp this summer as a counselor with her best friends Ava and Imogen but she is not the only one harboring a secret. When a local boy is discovered dead in the lake, people start pointing fingers about who may be responsible for his death. This was a lot of fun for what it was. The summer camp setting gave me a lot of nostalgia. I really liked the friendship between Goldie, Ava, and Imogen. They were just so loyal and protective of one another. I really liked the alternating timelines between then and now. I think that it was a really effective way to unfold the mystery to the reader. I was not the biggest fan of Goldie, and it wasn't even just Goldie herself. It was the great big stupid idiotic decision that she made that leads to the great secret, which I'm obviously not going to spoil, but it, it just could never be me. That's all I'm gonna say. It just could never be me, which made it very hard to root for her. But one thing I will say is that I did not see the ending coming, which made it better in my opinion, because a lot of times I am able to call these things. But this one, I did not even, wasn't even in my mind, wasn't even a twinkle in my eye. I do think that this would be a really great summer read, so, I mean, it's fall now, but next summer, pick this up. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. All right, everybody, so those were the last seven books that I read for the month of August 2023. If you are interested in the first seven, like I said, video will be linked down below. Check it out. If not, that's fine. You watch this video, so that still makes me happy. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!